our last two stories dealing with food, and uh, the last one in particular dealing with children and food, and I know that's something you're going to touch on today. We are so. Because Colin is here today with his daughter. Yes, he is. It's spring break, and Colin Proctor is here with Made with Love Delectable Edibles. Maybe we'll just check in with them right now and find out what we're making. It's a dessert. It's going to be good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have Imogen here today, and we are doing some Aztec chocolate ice cream with raspberries and whipped cream. <laughs> Who makes the whipped cream, Colin? Uh, Who's responsible for the cream, I should say? You know what? I think that's going to be Imogen. We were go we were going to whip it ourselves, but we've decided that might take up take up a bit too much time. Okay. So we we just brought the the spray on. Okay, so I think right. she's got the whipped cream under control. Okay, good. I think we should have a whipping cream fight today. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Why not? Spring break. Do you still have yours left over from Thursday? It's in the fridge, so that means there are two. It's like having two swords. You need two. Yes. So let's do it. Okay, okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are back to spring weather as well. I'd like to say I'm very excited about that. Welcome back. We are making a tasty dessert today with Colin Proctor and his daughter is here, Imogen, joining us because she has the week off for spring break. Thank you so much for being here, sweetie. Are you going to help make dessert? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us what we're making today. Um, we are going to make ice cream, whipped cream, Aztec chocolate, and some raspberries, raspberries on top. Okay, so you and your dad are going to put this together. Uh, Colin, tell me a little bit about this one. Is this a family favorite for you guys? Or? You know what? Mm -hmm. I've never really d done the Aztec chocolate just sprinkled on ice cream. We're sort of going to do it the way we would do it on coffee or that sort of thing. Sure. I got up this morning and I started mixing up yogurt for Aztec chocolate pa parfaits and that sort of thing. And Imogen was like, no, Dad, you said you were going to do Aztec chocolate ice cream. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> So you better do it. <laughs> so I said, okay. Okay, well, I guess I'm not doing the avocados and limes, limes and raspberry salad or, I guess or the not. parfaits. We're doing the Aztec chocolate ice cream today. And I think that's great. I had a little scoop of the ice cream out of here, just a little bit. Mm. Yummy. I don't eat enough ice cream. I've decided yeah. it's delicious. Absolutely. And this is a good, healthy ice cream, isn't it? As healthy as ice cream can be. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. I didn't really pay too much attention when I got it this yes. morning. I think it's pretty good. It's, it's natural. Yes. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't looked too specifically on the ice on the ingredients but it is nice ice cream it is nice it's so, vanilla and it's yeah it's great so Imogen what are we doing here we're yes. scooping out the ice cream right mm -hmm. and probably two scoops is enough for this or do you want to go more heavy no, Imogen you? wants five scoops five scoops well yeah <laughs> I'm just kidding we'll just do three we'll just you're do a good three. advocate I am she likes you I can sure. see myself eating some of this in a minute all so. right so how's so school going by the way good and what grade are you in grade one and you go to Bert Edwards, mm -hmm. and that's the science school in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you like science? Yeah. Good for you. Do you like ice cream more than science, though? Yeah. Yes, yes. you do. Yes, you do. As do I. No, we love Bert Edwards School. It's, yeah, it's a, a good school. Wonderful school. It's an excellent school. Yeah, that was a good one that they decided to do with the science school. So we're okay. scooping up the ice cream now. You were going to put some Aztec chocolate on top no. of the ice cream. <laughs> After the whipped oh, cream. Oh, because it has to go on the top? Oh. Does that okay, go on the top? Okay, I thought it went on the ice cream, and then it sort of melted into the ice cream. Okay, so on the whipped cream. Okay. So you're going to do raspberries next? Do you want to add some of the raspberries on? Some of the raspberries. Okay. Do you want to throw some okay. of those on the ice cream? Some raspberries on top. Okay. So where's, uh, where's Alexandra today? Busy doing something Alexandra else? Alexandra is um, nice. doing some work at home. We're doing a lot, of, a lot of phoning and that sort of thing. Lots, yes. of, lots of office stuff. And the greenhouses are obviously yeah. a lot of work right now, yeah, right? Because you're getting ready. Any yeah. snow left where you are? or you're No, we're no. right down by the river, so it's, okay. there's no snow. Yeah, so you guys are getting busy yeah. now. Yeah, and that's good. It's very good. That's good. How many raspberries? You're counting them out carefully, which is yeah, excellent. They are. Now, I would go heavier on those because that's going to Can I balance, plunk a couple more on here? Balance your flavor, yeah. okay? Plunk. Your plunk. ice cream. Plunk. Uh, lots of ice. There we go. So this is a very easy dessert. This and is it's, super And you're easy. actually getting in some fruit as well, which is great, right? Kids love fruit, so to put it with some ice cream is always good. Mm -hmm. And you really can't knock raspberries. They're yummy. No, you can't. Let's get a close-up of those. Look at that. Delicious. That's a nice spring dessert, isn't it? Mm hmm Okay. So, we should shake the whipped cream first. Now, do you want to put the whipped cream on? Woohoo! Woohoo! 
don't spray your dad. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. All ready All to right. go. Do you know how to do it? Mm -hmm. All right. Probably better than I do. Whoa. Woo. See, this is a good one for the kids, kids. to have fun with, right? Yeah. It's a win-win. It tastes good. The kids can make it. You've got your fruit in there. And tell me a little bit about the Aztec chocolate. How does it make it different from regular chocolate? So Paul? the Aztec chocolate is sort of a chocolate with a, a chili f a finish with a bit of a cinnamon and hot pepper. <laughs> so it, it's going to, it's going to, whoa. I <laughs> like the way you make desserts, up. Imogen. Wow, yeah. yeah. You know what? I approve. That is so some very good spraying. Awesome. Well done. Okay. So, so it has a little bit of chili. So it gives it a little bit more of a zing. I've had exactly. this before and it's quite good. Now you're just going to sprinkle it over so it's almost like a cappuccino is mm -hmm. how you're visualizing it. Just a bit of sprinkles on top. So a bit of cocoa. A little bit of cocoa just gives it that little bit of zing. Yeah. Where do you get the chili to put in this? Uh, well, the chili we use into it is is an organic cayenne. Yes. Is is the main chili that goes into it, and it we actually comes from uh, Nevada. Is where we source the this particular um, ingredient okay. that goes into it. Fantastic. What are some of the other popular recipes that you use for the Aztec chocolate? Because I know that we've done before. Mm. What did we use it before? We had a, cho a chocolate fruit dip, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we've done that. Yeah. Um, I really like it in the more savory things. I like it um, like done on chicken as sort of a mo mole sauce. Yeah. Or I'll do it in black beans as well, black re like refried black beans, and do it as a dip or on the side of like huevos rancheros or that sort of thing. Really? It's really great. Um, I'll often mix it with a bit of lime juice and olive oil on sort of a mixed greens salad as well, too. It's delicious like that. I'll say. Okay, we've got some spoons over here. Yeah. I don't think it would be um, wrong no, to give this no. a try. This ice because cream is going to melt. It's going to melt, and what a shame that would be. That so, be let's get this started here. Okay, thank you. There we go, you guys. Let's all have some. Cheers. Cheers. And, of course, if you are interested, you can check out the website. Uh, recipes, of course, at www.madewithlove.ca. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. A happy spring dessert, you guys. Yeah, good one, Imogen. Imogen, thank you very much for coming on today. It's been a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you. And tell your mom I say hi. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a, break, a quick break. When we come back, we're checking in actually with Rose Sonnet, community nutritionist, about the benefits of buying and eating locally produced food. Stay with us. Mm -mm. Welcome back. Our final segment on this Tuesday afternoon, Rose Sonnet, community nutritionist. Thank you for being here today. You're welcome. We are talking about the importance of buying and eating locally produced food, which we all know about, and some of us are better at it than others. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about what's in the basket, for example. Well, all kinds of neat I honestly, I just came from the store <clears throat> and scoped out locally grown and produced foods. So, um, starting on this side, we've got pasta that was made in Vernon. Lentils from the Oliver area, cheese from Salmon Arm, mm -hmm. and of course our local suppliers here. Parsnips, red cabbage, apples. And um, I think it's really important to remember that it's not only do we produce it, and we have also a lot of other products, but um, that we were talking earlier about what the recent happenings in the world and how the con you know, uh, food security has become a real issue. Absolutely, because uh, because of the earthquake in Japan and food has become a real issue over there. Yeah. Um, what does it look like for Kamloops? If there was to be a sudden disaster here, mm -hmm. what would happen in yeah. terms of food supply in Kamloops? If uh, our railways and roads were, let's say, shut down for any for reason, we estimate there's about three days worth of food in for Kamloops, each person. For each person, and so there's two parts to it. Number one, we may not be able to get food from the lower mainland, which was a lot of our food. Or two, they couldn't get food down there. So having local food grown is, is really important. And uh, much as I'm a, a nutritionist and I promote local, it's really the economic development uh, portion of it that has probably the greatest effect to any community is, by, is having a local industry Okay. Around. Yep. Now, we see more and more larger chains like Safeway or Save on Foods, mm -hmm. Cooper's, uh, carrying local product. For example, right here, we were just on with Made with Love Delectable Edibles, and their things are supplied at Cooper's, which is a major chain. So it's not hard to support the local food industry, is it? It's not hard, and it, if you ask for it, it will come. And that's probably the best message for people is 
if um, the suppliers don't know you want local food, they don't look for it. So if you go to the uh, managers and say, you know, I really want to support local, um, they will. And you, we've seen that change over time. Um, I also want to talk about how do you define local? I, I think it's the exactly. most common question mm -hmm. people ask me is, Rose, what does local mean? And um, you probably have heard of the 100-mile diet. It's become very, very popular. But really for us, local is grown as close to home as possible, whether it's just outside of that 100-mile or it could be 50 meters outside of your door in your own garden. Uh, it's important to get it as close to home as possible. And different seasons, you have to go a little bit further. But again, keep that in mind because transportation is an environmental impact. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, another great source of buying locally is the farmer's market, which we all know about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's coming up pretty quickly. Yep. In April, they'll be starting up again um, at the end of April, beginning of May. And we're really fortunate in that we have multiple locations in town, including Sun Peaks. We also have different programs that you can sign up for, like uh, Thistle Farms has a box you can get a week. So that certainly brings awareness um, to that. And uh, so many different ways. I know you've had a great demonstration of how you can use local food, but uh, I served uh, roasted parsnips uh, just a couple of days ago. And people said, what vegetable is this? Isn't that amazing? And when I said it's parsnip, something that's, you know, a lot of people consider old-fashioned, um, are gaining a lot of popularity again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can say for myself, I know what a parsnip is. A lot of people do, but my parents, uh, I live in Victoria. My dad mm -hmm. is a farmer at heart, and he grows every vegetable and fruit known to man. And so... For me, being able to eat things that have been grown out of the earth, right outside of your door, it, yep. it's really important to be able to do that if you can. Absolutely. And I'm sure you would promote uh, people having a small garden if they can. Oh, absolutely. And this is the ideal time to put out those vegetables that are cold resistant. So things like um, um, spinach, you know, you can start seeding them now. The other thing that uh, has come up over the last little while, you've probably... Um, seen the reports on rising food prices. Yes. And so why that's important for local is, again, any of the industries that will um, rely on petroleum products, and from petroleum they get a lot of fertilizers, etc. So trying to buy local, trying to buy organic actually reduces the dependence on those. And so if we can help our producers locally, it'll help our food prices stay down. So we're expecting pretty big changes over the next couple of months. I'm sure. And another big thing I know.